All right, um, let me see. The lighting is off. I think better do. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. All right, hey, everyone. So, I am going to do a live interview with... Uh, try to hurry. A live interview with Katrina Thomas. It's not right. I can't get it. I can't get it right. So hopefully it don't look too dark on my end. So let me agree to invite some friends. Do, 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 do. How is everyone doing? I hope everyone is doing well on this Monday. Okay. Yeah, the lightning is still not working. Hold up. Let me, let me see if I could do something. I don't know. That might have helped. It. So, for those who don't know me, I am Alicia Richardson, and my business is called Memble Moments by Lee. I am a domestic violence and sexual assault advocate. Oh, hey, good. You're there. And, um, I, uh -oh. Give me a minute. Okay. I'm a um, domestic violence and sexual assault advocate. So I bring awareness to it. And I also work with individuals or work do group sessions with loving yourself wholeheartedly. And when you're loving yourself, it starts within. You have to love yourself inside in order for you to love yourself outside. So I also teach people how to do that. And with that, it's all about what you put in your body, what you eat what you drink, how you exercising, and how you doing different things. And with me, when you're not doing certain things, you're not being aligned with the way you feel. So then you don't like how you feel with yourself or what you're doing and how you're going about with things. So, wait a minute. I will be interviewing Miss Katrina Thomas. Yay, and she's on here. So, how we met was through Tiffany, which is, she does this podcast every Monday, Speak Up and Inspire. Me and Katrina are co-hosts, so I'm helping her out today by doing this live. And I will be talking to Miss Katrina Thomas today, which I am so excited to do. Alright, so... Let me pull up some. Uh oh! My phone just keep falling. Sorry, guys. So, with Katrina, she also is a domestic violence advocate as well. We work in the community, bringing as much awareness as we can. And for those who don't know, this is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. I'm still trying to get the light because I guess I don't like how it looked in my end. This is Domestic Violence Awareness Month for those who are not aware of that. So, yes, wear your purple, yeah, to support domestic violence awareness. But with Miss Katrina, she has been recognized through Diva Nation this weekend, um, past weekend, uh, at the Diva Nation Gala. And I'm so excited for that. So, okay, enough about. What I do and what she do, I want to get her on so she can tell y'all herself. So let me figure out, let me see if I can figure out how to add her. And talk about what we do. I'm adding her now. Hey! Hi! <laughs> how are you? I'm out. How are you? I'm blessed. That's good. That's good. Oh, Miss Katrina does so many things. She also has mentor program, you guys. We, when I tell you we be like in the community, I, I don't even know how we have time to sleep. I really don't. <laughs> I don't. I really don't because I'm I'm truly tired. <laughs> yes. Like because we constantly going, we constantly trying to help others. We my light is just off. We constantly trying to get it in and 
help the community as much as we can. And by doing that, we we can't sleep. You, you can't be sleep helping other others. But of course, you we, can't get no eight hours sleep. You right. can't get no straight eight hours right. sleep. Um, so it's it's a work within itself. But again, you you myself tiffany and great women like andrea miss benton uh valerie joan there's so many great women out here doing this type of work and we know that god works through us for us to give back to the community exactly and that's where we get our strength from it is. exactly and also i want everyone to know we do self-care because if we don't take care of ourselves we can't help no one else so of course that's i right. always tell people Hashtag me first because it starts with me in order for me to help empower anyone else, to help motivate anyone else, to help for us to do what we need to do for anyone else. So, Miss Katrina, since it's Domestic Violence Awareness Month, would you be able to share a brief one a brief little story about your situation or your experience with domestic violence? Okay, well, I'm going to introduce myself. I'm Katrina Thomas. I'm the CEO and founder of Loving Yourself No More Abuse, which is based out of Riverdale, Georgia. Once again, this story, it, it started way back when I was younger, all the way to my adulthood. But as you know, I'm not a victim anymore, and I don't claim to be a victim. I'm a victory. Victory is what I am and what I represent now and what I try to teach others to get to. But as Leah said, we want to work on ourselves. So the progress has to start with working with fixing your mindset first and then working from inside to outside. So we try to develop you emotionally, physically, and mentally for your next relationship, for preparing your mind to know and to be aware going forward of what domestic violence looks like. Okay. Cause a lot of people don't even know what it looked like. And we all say, Oh, I'm not, yeah, I'm not going to go through that. Don't never say never. That, that's just my theme. Mm -hmm. Never say never. I mean, when I look at my situation, I never thought I would be in that because when you meet someone and you fall in love, you really think you're in love for life. Yeah, you do. You really do. And, you know, mine started from a child. And because I didn't have that love and went through rape and things of that sort, I lost confidence and belief in myself that anybody could truly love me. So I ran around and did some things that I, I, I'm ashamed of. Mm -hmm. But God told me not to be ashamed because everything, everybody goes through a trial and tribulation for them to get to their victory. You understand? So, therefore, I know now I'm about building up. And like you said, that means health-wise, everything. Yes. We don't just build up on just the emotional. We build up on physical, too. So this is all going to give you the confidence to go forward to recognize things that you may not have recognized before. So it's, it's a theme that I say, take off the blinders. Yeah. So that we can see clearly. Yeah. So let's back up a little bit and explain like the different forms of domestic violence, because a lot of people think that domestic violence is only the physical and it's way, it starts way before the physical even starts. So let's touch on that so we can give um, our viewers and the people that is listening or whoever hit the replay, what are some different types of domestic violence? Well, you know what? Some people don't even know that we have financial. Exactly. They don't. They don't. They don't. They know. don't. They, they, they don't. They by their money and that's financial abuse. Yes. Mm -hmm. Financial abuse because your abuser wants to take control of everything that you handle as far as money, your account, you and, and really treat you as if you're a child and give you allowance. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of people don't know about um, financial a lot of people don't know about PTSD and mental, yep. you know, because mentally, mentally, there's a lot of people that have a mental problem and we don't understand that. And we get into relationships because we don't have the understanding of what our mental issue is. Right. And we haven't gotten any professional help for our mental issues. And if you have PTSD, that takes counseling. You have to learn to recognize these things. If you don't go into deep of learning, what each thing revolves around, you will never proceed to go into being a survivor. Exactly. You will always be stuck in the middle. You will. Wondering why, why, why? You, why am I going through this yeah. over and over again? Yeah. 
that's because it starts with you being in them fallen patterns. It's like you repeating the same pattern when you think you're out of it and then you back into a whole nother relationship with someone totally different, but it's the same type of relationship. And that's because you repeating same patterns and same behaviors because you never learned how to become a survivor, like you said. And you, and like you right. said, we were saying also, if you don't know what the different types of domestic violence is, how are you even going to know how to handle or how to um, work on them areas? You're not. That's true. And you know this too, Leah, us as women, we're naturally nurturants to men. Yep. You understand? We, yep. we always want to give more love than we should. Mm -hmm. And that's just something about women. We want to do the extra to make them notice us and know, look, I'm that one. I love you just that much. Yeah. But why can if you if you express that so fast and move so fast and you go from relationship to relationship, these patterns that we're talking about will carry on and on and on. No matter how much you mm -hmm. give love, they will never give reciprocate reciprocate nope. that same love to you. Nope. It start being they will just not mm-hmm. It just, it goes back to, they will just start to angle and triangleize around your life and find a way to get in to intervene, to find that control pattern. Yeah. And they will watch you and see how they can, can take control of your life. So controlling is a lot. And I want you ladies to know this, when you're dating, date, date. Right. I mean, keep this, all of this, and that's all I'm going to say, all of this, you need to hold off on yeah. it. That, you that need can to wait. Be alive. That can wait. That See, can that, wait. That's another if you can get a, we, It's uh -huh. like a lot of females, they feel as though that's their way of showing love by quick to jump in a bed. And it's like, no, you're really not showing love that way. And that's because you need to work on your self love because you're already not understanding that that's not how you really showing love. And they feel as though by them doing that, Oh, if I do this, he's going to know I love him and he's going to love me back. No, baby. <laughs> no. It doesn't. You're so right, sis. It doesn't work like that. You know, we're, like I said, we're nurturing. You know, we always want to give and give and give and give. And that's where we open ourselves to being taken advantage of yeah. because we give too much and they, then they step back and they give just as little. Yeah. They don't open up as much as we do. And, you know, we have to learn to make a man work for what we want in life and for what value we want them to value out of us. You have to make them work for that. Right. If you make it easy, if you make it easy, you will pay the consequences. Yeah, yeah. I'm, and the thing is, it's like you really, if you're making it easy, they're going to be easy to leave. And just think about it. Oh, it's easy to start doing this. It's easy to jump right into it. Then, okay, I got what I want. I'm done. So it's easy to leave. And then that's exactly so. It's easy. Also, you opening the door for stuff to be the patterns of the abuse to start coming in because now you feel as mm -hmm. though this is I want more out the relationship so now you feel like you're gonna accept whatever he give you even if it's the control it's like well I'd rather take right. something than nothing exactly and that's what a lot of women of today do they accept things and they they, they blind themselves to what the truth is and what's before them just to accept to be loved because they want to be loved so much that they accept anything but i'm here to tell you you can do way better than that by investing yourself put that same effort you put into that man put it into yourself to elevate yourself to another level get to know what you can do out here on your own we can be on a marriage and still be independent mm -hmm. we can be in relationships and still be independent mm -hmm. you don't have to put everything solely on that man exactly. or that woman because exactly. it's vice versa because men go through it oh, too yes, you have did. to learn how to step up Right. You have to learn how to step up and be your own person and show that you have a personality and a business like mine yourself. Because when you do that, then you can you you'll be equally yoked. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. You can't be equally yoked with someone that you don't share uh diff, um same views and understand one another from from business to emotional to right. just communication. Communication is the key to every relationship. Right. If there's one person taking all control. How can you be evenly yoked? You can't. It's it's not going to work. It's not going to work. Mm -mm. 
Yeah. It's definitely not going to work. And I say, you know, if you're if you're out here and you're feeling like you need to elevate yourself, you need to get in touch with women like Leah, myself, Tiffany, Miss Benton, anybody. Because guess what? We're here to elevate you to your next because everyone has a next. And that next plateau is finding out who you really are and recognizing yourself for the queen or the king that you are. Don't let nobody tell you you less than what you are okay. because you are what God made you to be. You understand? Yeah. Not what man or woman made you to be or told you you are. Right. Since so you're doing that, that self esteem. Yeah. So mm -hmm. tell me, how did you um go out? Be, go out to become. I mean, not go out. I'm sorry, my phone keep falling. How mm -hmm. did you become an advocate? What made you get into the process of feeling like you know what I need to let other people know? what's going on and bring awareness? Well, what, how I got started, Leah, is because I had to look at myself and I was going through a lot because I was emotionally, physical, uh, sexual, every abuse type of way that you can be financial. I had all of that. Mm -hmm. And I really got tired and fed up and I felt like I was feeling sorry for myself, but I had to find myself again and say, you know what, Katrina, pick yourself up. You can do better than this. You're not trapped. And I never told my family or anybody what I was going through. Really, actually, these last couple of years is when my family's really hearing my story yeah. because I did my movement by myself. Mm -hmm. I went and I seek God first. Yeah. And as I started going to church, God just started working on me and revealing to me that I can make these movements and that I could be better than what I am. And as I encouraged myself and empowered myself by myself, I stepped out. And, and God told me, now since I got you out of this situation and showed you a better path of life, you need to get out here and show some others. So I'm not, I'm not better than anybody. I'm not perfect. I'm just someone who's striving to give others a better life yeah. and a better chance of living their best life. So I started this organization off for me, not for pity, but to help others and to bring awareness to what is going on to us. Women, young adults, men, young boys is all over the world now and i just felt like me being a voice for the voiceless is what i was put out here to do yeah and um it's, it's amazing how you say you started the journey on your own because i believe that you have to go through a transition stage within yourself in order for you mm -hmm. to be able to be help for someone else because by you going through this transition of digging deep inside because that's what you had to do you had to really dig deep inside yourself figure out what was going on figure out what you liked figure out what you didn't like figure out the process and the steps you had to make all while being guided by god and you had to go through that in order for you to go through you that. Had to. and it's, it's only a choosing few that are able to go through that to help others and that's why you know we've been picked <laughs> strange enough you're right been you're right <laughs> you're right and you know and i took some intensive training with you know some great women like andrea merriman and i took some training with kawan finch webster that's why i am a coach now a certified co yeah. coach so this is the things that we have to do and th those trainings girl let me tell you they made me look at myself even oh, again don't I know. and <laughs> some things and go back to that hurt yeah. so i recommend both of them women andrea merriman and kawana finch webster they brought some things out and i really had you have to know yourself first and you have to know that you love yourself before you can go out and show anybody else what to do recognize what what's going on inside of you because that's important because a broken person can't help a broken person not at all Y'all just hitting it down yeah. the, the same wrong path and y'all just going to be yeah. in circles. And that is so exactly. true. Like you, you have to revisit that place you thought you would never have to go see. That place you thought, I, I ain't ever going back down that path. No, you have to <laughs> actually revisit that place in you order do. for you to face it, to get through it, to walk through it in order for you to be like, I overcame some really tough stuff. Right. And then, you know, through those trainings, I had to also learn about triggers and things like yep. that. And you don't, if, when you're going into a relationship, you need to tell your man about your triggers right off the top, yeah, you know, yeah. what you've been through. Yeah. Don't go into a relationship without telling your, your friend, your boyfriend, whichever way you would like to put it about what you've been through.
Right. Because therefore they're not shocked if you he does something or she does something and you'd be like, oh, why, 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 why? because you have triggers. So you have to be honest from the beginning. That's just like if somebody had a disease and they came and saying, you don't want them to be, you know, around you and right. all of a sudden you want to do something and oh, you got what? <laughs> That's the same right. way I feel about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? That's the same way I feel about if I'm going in a relationship, you need to tell that person about what you've been through. And if they really care for you, they're going to learn to love you and understand what you've been through. Yes. And so get a person who's through the process mm -hmm. to transition so that you can help others. So, right. Um, right. Wait, wait, sorry. It's okay. Uh, probably. Um, when you said about the triggers, you have to know what your triggers is because I realized like when I, before I learned what mine was, it's like anything was just making me go off the hinges and it's oh, like, yeah. well, you shouldn't have said this and you shouldn't have did that. Well, the way you look, mm -hmm. you know, so mm -hmm. once you recognize what your triggers is, then you could be like, oh shoot, I'm about to, it's about to happen. I already know what's right. with me, be on the edge. Yeah. And you are able yeah. to step back and be like, let me remove myself. And so mm -hmm. that's why it's really important that you learn what your triggers are. That is how you it, it's very it's very important that you learn that. And it's very important that you learn there's moments and times that you need to sit down and just meditate. Oh meditate. Exactly. Yes. I do it, I have to do it daily. I have to do yeah. it daily. Sometimes when I'm having a bad day or, or something may not go the way I think it should have went, I have to sit down and meditate and just take it in because of that situation and because all that I've been through, sometimes I can be a little jumpy. So God has gotten me to the point where I say, you know, sit, sit it down, Katrina, sit it down and think. And even maybe even fast to a day or two. And I yeah. tell you, my mind comes back even more clear. Hey, Randy, my brother, I see you popped in. But, you know, as I said, you know, this is, this is like a disease, but you have to treat it just like you, you treat really, anything else. You really do. You do. And you I like what you said with the, Sometimes you do have to just sit, step, take a step back. And when you take that step back, it's, it's for you to refocus, reposition yourself and be like, okay, all right, I'm, I'm back now because it, it was a lot going on. Because anything, it could be that you having a really, really stressful day and you don't mm. want to let a stressful day bring up triggers and bring up exactly. things that's going to make you, ah, so yeah, it, yeah, because it it'll make you, it'll make you jumpy and make you want to just explode. But you have to look back and say, you know what, I got this, and I'm gonna sit back and I'm gonna take control. I'm gonna take control of, and I'm also gonna let God control. So let yeah. go and let God. That's my favorite thing. Okay. I, I let God come in and let Him tell me what I should do. Like on anything that I do in life now, I have learned through me being a woman of God and learning God still to this day. I have to let go and let God sometimes. Exactly. So sometimes it's best to be silent and just be yeah. observant. It really yeah, is. Yeah, just observe really what's is. going on. And then speak after you have resolved all of that in mm -hmm. and then speak on it. So that's that's things that I have learned through programs and training that I'm taking. And I, like I said, wonderful women, Andrea, Kawana, Joan, mm -hmm. just people who are so amazing to helping you to go to your next you can't go, we can't do this fight by ourselves because as we know, this is a fight that needs a whole village. Yes. A whole village. Yes. And that village has to be united for the fight. United yes. for the fight. We can't be fighting against one another because this is something that's not going away. It hasn't gone away in years. So we do need to unite. And, you know, I, that's sisters, brothers. I don't care what race you are. We need to unite because right. this is something that's growing and growing and growing. And our next generation needs us. And we are to teach them to be leaders, not followers. Exactly. Because this is something that's much bigger than just you and me. So it's like, you mm -hmm. need, like you said, a village. And by doing, bringing awareness about what everything is, the different forms of domestic violence, constantly being, a, being in the community and speaking about it, is how people being aware and that's how a village is formed because it's like you know 
it, it's going to take a lot of us. Like you, it might take a nation really because right. it, we keep ignoring the situation and sweeping it under the rug and not speaking about it. It's just making it worse than what it is already been. It really is. Okay. Because, you know, we have to also know that even though we've been through it, we recognize when somebody's going through, it. we don't naturally have to have someone come up to us and say that they're in an abusive relationship because we've been through it. You know, you what know. is real and what is yeah. not real. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's very important to know as well, you know, recognizing what's real and not real because as us having a nonprofit organization, some people will come in and take, try to take advantage too. And, you know, I have to politely let people know I'm not about that. Right. I'm about helping. And, you know, if you looking this and that, I'm not about giving money and things of that sort. You know, this is a God given thing. So I'm going to deal with it on the godly you note, know, not mm -hmm. on the woman and man thought of what they may try to do to me to take advantage. It's right. never going to happen because the sword, the sword and the protection of God is always, is always oh, around me. Yeah, 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 I'm covered. already covered by, by God. You yeah. understand? So there's nothing that you can do anymore to hurt me. What people do to try to hurt me, bounce off them, off of me and back onto them, okay? So I don't worry about that kind of stuff no more. I do my things. I walk with faith and I see by sight what yeah. God tells me to see. So that's what I'm just, I'm just want to do that. And you know, with it being domestic violence awareness month, I, all of October is looking, we need to do this in every state, make some kind of mark to show people what to do. Exactly. We really do. So um, I also want to recognize and congratulate you for the um, yeah. Human Action Gala and the award. Congratulations. Thank you. So Thank tell me you. about it. How was it? Because I wasn't there. It was, oh my goodness. I was hoping you were going to be there too. It was so exciting. And just I'm to sorry. be a monk. Oh my God. To be among some great women like Joan, Andrea, Valerie, Miss Benton, who I love to death, Tiffany. Yes. I mean, it, it it was overwhelming. I cried like a baby because, you know, when you you know you are truly, genuinely loved by some sisters who got your back, it's very overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And I felt like, God, I really, really now have my sisterhood. And yeah. I really feel I can call any of these ladies when I need something going on. And the way they spoke about me, even after some people left, I, I mean, it just, it, it touched my heart. And yeah. I know that God is real. I know that there are some good people in the world and I, I love that. So I accepted it and I love Miss Benton for giving me that award. And I, I, you know, I just, I don't know what to say to God be the glory because he does it all. I'm just a servant it, of his. Yes. And it, it feels good to know that you are recognized for all. Yeah. Your that's work, it. You know, right. All your hard work is paying off. Right. Yes. You know, like I like I said, it's not even for the pity. It's for the glory, baby. It's for the glory. And, you know, that that makes you smile. That makes your heart say, God, I did it. And I'm going to continue to do it. You know, my walk is never over. It continues each and every day. And I hope that doors are opening where I thought they would never open it. And you, I just have to say, that's nothing but God. That's nothing, nothing but, but God. <laughs> nothing but. And it's, it's amazing yeah. how when you walk in, in the vision that he had for you, have for you, how the people will just start flocking to you to connect you to all of the places where you need to go so that things can start moving. Like, tell us more about your organization, your um, the mentor program with the youth. Okay, well, the mentor program, you know, I started last year. And this mm -hmm. mentor program started in Perry, Georgia. But as you know, this was hard for me. I battled with it with the first year because I didn't know if I was going to keep it or not because the kids were like, woo <laughs> when your kids are grown and you go back to dealing with younger children I had to really pace myself but I love it and they are so loving to me and I find myself doing more and more with them I have learned to be like a big sister to all of them and even like a second mom and they look up to me and now that I see these kids come and run into me with report cards and, and all these type of things it makes my heart it just makes my heart just I don't know. It just feels so good, That's Leah. Good. It just feels so good. good. And, you know, they are being mentored for educational. They're being into, um, 
they're being educated on relationship with their parents, how to communicate. It's just many things that we teach them. Then we reward them each day with their good behavior. So we're teaching them how to behave. We're just teaching you life skills, basically. And I, I like how you said you mentoring them and teaching them how to have relationship with their parents because a lot of kids don't have no good relationship with their parents. Because mm -hmm. I know growing up, I didn't have a good relationship with my mom. It's like I was afraid to talk to her about anything. So for you to teach them, hey, you have to have a, a relationship with your parent, that is so good. And that's going to that's teaching them when they become an adult and they have kids, how to communicate with their kids and, you know, so forth. So that is amazing. I love that. And you know the reason why we do that too, because there's a lot of bullying going on and that bullying can lead to people trying to hurt themselves. So therefore we want you to be able to open up to your parents and tell them what's going on in school. Because yeah. I've had kids come and say they're being bullied and their lunch is being taken, they're being cornered in the bathroom and jumped on. So this is opening up people kids yeah. to know that we yeah. can talk to our parents we need that more today because if there's more communication with the parents then we're saving more lives and we're, yes, we we're preventing we're preventing more children from not going into the gang life as well yeah yeah so you know it, this, this is all leading up to stopping bullying gun violence everything you have to show your kids that you are there for you you have to make time for your kids no matter what our daily life is of working and taking care of our family you have to to make time to sit down with your children and have conversations. You do. Even if it's for like 15 to 20 minutes out the day mm -hmm. before they go to bed, like just going right. to have a little brief conversation. How was your day? How was school? And if you constantly do it every single day, they're going to start opening up to you more and like, oh, well, you know, they are interested in how my day really is. Because I know like if you really have not done it and you just start and your child will be looking at you like, where this coming from? So it's, yeah, it's yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and that's, you know, that, and it's, it's, it's a good thing you said that because when I first started the first year and we started doing stuff like that, it was looking like, well, where that came from? Yeah. We didn't know we were coming here for that. You know, like I, like I told Tiffany, they thought it was like a babysitting thing at first. So it was a process that they had <laughs> right. to get used to. Yeah. Cause they wasn't used to anybody saying, putting structure in their life and saying, okay, you came in here, I'm going to give you 30 minutes, you can have your little snack and your drink, and then 30 minutes later, I want to see your book bags with what your homework is, and I want to see what your teacher is saying and your, and your journal. They was like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, hold on, this is not normal to us. So. Yeah, this ain't normal. I don't, do the, I don't do this at home. But now, since it's the second year, they're more used to it. So I, I really, and the parents have even came to me and said, I have made a difference in their lives. And a lot of these parents have became really good friends with me and look up to me. And I like that because when I look back, Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's good. So let me ask, so what made you even start the organization? Like how, how did you even come up with the vision? I mean, I know it was God, but how did you get to the point where you like, I have to do this? How I really came up with it is I was sitting up and I was saying, well, just coming to what the name was a struggle. And I was like, wait a minute. I'm always saying loving yourself. I need to love myself. I need to love myself. I said, oh, loving yourself, no more abuse. Because I knew I had to find Katrina and love me. So why not name it loving yourself, no more abuse? Mm -hmm. So that's how I came up with the name. Then when I went more into preparing a vision, I just went off of me and how I felt at that moment. And I said, you know what? My emotions was all over the place and everything was everywhere. And I was feeling like I had nobody on my side, my corner, because as I told you, I told nobody about my abusive situation. I told nobody about my rape, nothing. Everything right. was carried on my shoulders for years. Yeah. Yeah. So all of this came up to me coming up with loving yourself, no more abuse. It was just based off of everything that I've been through. And I, I knew that was a strong statement to me. Mm hmm Yeah. Cause it's just like it could, like I said, it's me first. It starts with me. 
And yes. knowing it starts with you loving myself no more. It's like I'm not accepting no abuse. No accepting more. anything. Yes. I'm not accepting anything but greatness in my life. God said I'm worthy to be praised and I will not accept anything less. Anything or anyone that comes to disrupt my peace of mind or my peace of how I'm walking now, you will be dismissed. Yeah. It's, it's, yes. You're not allowed. You're not allowed. <laughs> That door will be right there and you it will open and you will walk out. I'm stronger and I recognize things more better now. I'm more open to knowing that I can walk away from something without fighting, arguing, or anything. I can do it in a pleasant way and end it just like that. But the whole important thing is I'm not where I used to be. Yeah. I'm a brand new Katrina yeah. and I, I love the Katrina that I see now. This is a little girl that you've seen from Little Who was lost, abandoned by her mom. And I, I, I just, I look at myself now and I, I'm not even mad with my mom anymore. I'm not mad of my dad because I know my mom and my dad love me, but what they were going through at that time is what they was going through. Mm -hmm. I don't believe mm -hmm. that they really wanted to abandon me or not be there for me like they were supposed to. It was just what they're going through. Nobody in life is perfect. So I have always, I, my auntie who raised me has always told me to forgive my parents. And love them regardless because um, I'm supposed to honor thy parents. I'm glad you brought the word forgiveness up because mm -hmm. also being a survivor, you have to know how to forgive. To forgive, yes. Because so that was my biggest. Yes, that and you know what? That's the hardest thing to do. You could overcome it everything is. else, but that forgiveness. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Buddy. Yeah. <laughs> that, that is so hard, hard because the hardest thing to try to do. Because not it is. Only are you forgiving your the abuser? You have to forgive yourself. Mm. Exactly, and that was our. And you know, I learned that with Andrea Merriman's program and Kawan. You know, forgiveness. I had to forgive myself, and I had to. I had to go back and and say, you know, I really forgive my parents for what they yep. did. You know, and you know, I always told my dad up until he passed. You know that I loved him and I forgave him for whatever he did. And I, I tell my mama that even at still to this day. And, you know, I have to know that, you know, as a parent, sometimes we do things that's be not best for our kids, but we feel that we're doing it for the best of our kids. Yeah. If you get what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I'm a parent. I've been there and I'm a grandparent now. So I understand sometimes we have to sacrifice some things. Who yeah. are we to judge? We can't judge anybody at the end of the day. Only God can judge us. And when that time comes, he will judge us accordingly. Oh, that's exactly that's exactly the words um because yeah. a lot of times that we blame our parents for our what we go, went through or had to go through and that's all they probably knew what they thought was best at the time like you said they didn't know yeah. so they, so whatever they was doing or whatever they did was the best that they thought they knew because maybe yeah. they were being taught correctly or certain things that they lacked so they just mm. thought what they they just went off of what they already knew. That's true. And and that's how I see that's how I see it to be with my parents. And you know, my mom is still alive and all I do is I try to love on her for yeah. who she is. You understand? And I know I only have one mom and you know, you have to love your parents while they're still here. I, I just feel I just want to say this to anybody that's watching. You need to love on one another. Stop judging on one another and stop arguing over the little petty things because you don't want to be those people saying, I could have, should have, would have over mm -hmm. somebody casting. Mm -hmm. Tell somebody today you love them. Don't wait yeah. till they're gone because too many of us we sacrifice and we argue over petty things. And then when you hear somebody sick, then we're we're running to their side. But right. they can't even hear what you're saying now because they're in a state of where they can't don't yeah. let it be like that. life is too short nobody's promised tomorrow learn to live and learn and learn to live and to love yes that right there learn to live and learn to love and like you said stop judging stop holding grudges and it starts with forgiving regardless of what the person did forgive them and definitely forgive yourself once you forgive yourself you're able to move past what they did to you and mm -hmm. you will feel much lighter like when you're walking around with that holding on oh to that goodness. hurt holding on to that uh i just can't stand that person because of what they did that's a lot of mm -hmm. weight on your body and on your mind it, 
It really is. When people walk around saying, man, my back hurt and this and that, it's the stress. The stress that you sleep is not that serious. Nothing's that serious because regardless if your sister lives in another state or your brother lives in another state, there's always a way to show love to one another. Yeah. Take 30 seconds out your day and just text and say, I love you. I was thinking about you. Yeah. And that's not even that's long. Simple. 30 seconds, a quick text. You could do that, what? Walking your way to the bathroom. You know, oh, let me text them real yeah. quick. Walking to the car. Yeah. And Yes. You know, and you know, that's, that's the way... Mm -hmm. to know now why wait till they passed away and they in the coffin they can't hear you now they can't hear you when they sit mm -hmm. they, they like you said they, they in a whole yeah. other state of mind right you know it's it's just it's just life is what it is and life is not always going to be good life is what you make it it yes uh, make it and we have to learn that you understand we have to learn to in life to take it accordingly and, and, and measure ourselves up, but measure ourselves up with God, not with people. Exactly. And that's what a lot of people do. They measure themselves up with people. So people are going to always fail you. People, you're going to always fall short when you're measuring yourself up to people. You got to look right. up to the higher power. Not that's people. right. Not people, people, you know, and that's what I, and you know, that was part of my problem back then when I was going through all those issues, I was looking for people to validate me when I had to learn to validate myself. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. People cannot make me or break me. I can only do that myself. Exactly. So I have to know how to control me and understand myself to go forward in life. So the thing, this is why I'm so compassionate about abuse because it's about love and compassion these people need love and compassion not judgment not oh you better leave now and i don't even know why you stayed that long that's oh not God. what they need they that's don't. not what they need no and a lot of people don't understand that they they just say that because that's just the first thing they pop in their mind because they really don't understand and when you constantly saying that why are you why are you allowing that to happen won't you just leave they already in a position where they really just can't just leave. If they could just leave, they would have been just left. Right. And that's why I, I mean, to educate people on domestic violence. Right. And this is, and this is why I said, we can say all day long that we don't know anybody in domestic violence, but I can guarantee you there's one person in your family I don't care who it is that has been through some type of abuse. And no matter if you don't go through it yourself, you still need to educate yourself on it. You need yeah. to go to some events. When they, these events come to your town, if it's free or paid for, whatever, or you win a ticket, go ahead and, and, and invest in yourself and get yeah. some knowledge on it. It's so even good for women to know who have daughters. Yeah. So do you have any events coming up or know anyone that's having an event this month? Um, well, I'm having an event on the 15th and I'm doing a rally for, you know, all the victims that we lost. I'm going to be naming some people and it's going to be in Macon, Georgia, at the River of Life Church with Apostle Elaine. And I'm so excited about it. We're going to walk and we're going to talk. And at the end, it's going to be dark and we're going to have our candles and I'm going to talk about the victims that we lost. And that's that. That's what I love to do. And, yes. you know, hopefully that will bring some people out to even maybe opening up. But, you know, even if they don't open up, just the presence to be there to give them the knowledge mm -hmm. and the resources mm -hmm. is all that I want to deliver. You know, I, I, it's not about how many, but it's about the vision and about the provision right. and about your actions. Right. It really right. is. Mm -hmm. It could be just two people show up. At least you know you touch them two people. You know, uh -huh. and that's what I always tell people. Don't focus on the amount of people that showed up. Focus on you staying true to your vision and knowing that one person being touched is going to spread the word to the next person. Yeah, because if it touched that person, that if it really touched that person, they're going to go tell somebody about it. Exactly. They're going to. And they're going to say, you need to get in touch with so-and-so and so. So word of mouth is really good. I yeah. don't care, like you said, if it's one person, they're going to tell somebody. Because yeah. I'm telling you, I used to be discouraged when people didn't show up at my events or it wasn't the crowd that I thought it should be. You know, we always think higher. You know, we yeah. want 50, 100 yeah. people there. <laughs> you know, <but> yeah. <laughs> and when you see it's like below that, you'd be like, oh, wow. I, yeah. I don't think I did a good job. But, you know, I, you, you, did, you did your job. Exactly. As long as you did what God put on you, you did yeah. your job. 
And those few people that went there, trust me, if they heard and believe in you, they're going to take that out there and they're going to spread that word. So it's really about word of mouth. And that's why I say a lot of times I love to do go lives and things like that. And when I don't see nobody on my go live, I don't care because I spread it in every group mm -hmm. and I know somebody's going to hear it. And that's a lot of ways that people have contacted me through me starting to share my go live doing a watch party. Yeah. So understand, understand people. There's many ways to get it out. Is. You don't have to be right there face to face. You do nope. not. Nope. And sometimes even though they wasn't on your live, they're going to still view it later. And uh -huh. you, it could be two people on your live or nobody on your live. And then when you go back, you see, oh, 45 people have seen it. So, oh, exactly. It, yeah. It grows. It grows. It really does. It grows. And as people, it, as you keep your face out there and keep pushing and, and pushing and push, like they say, pushing forward in your purpose, they're yeah. going to keep saying, well, I keep seeing this woman pop up all over the place. <laughs> She's everywhere, you know? So it, it's just like that. So I have grown the confidence that I don't rely on go lives or anything like that. I just know that my God is going to make everything possible. Yes. And I know as long as I stay focused, it's going to, it's going to work to the better of me yes. and for others. Yeah. yeah. So like I said, long all of us to do this, yeah. all of us to do this, we're, we're just a child, a woman of God, and we're doing what he wants us to do. So how can we fail? You can't fail when you have God not at all. We folks. ain't working for we the ain't working vision. for the devil. We're working for the king. We exactly. working for the king. <laughs> yes, yeah. I love that. Um <laughs> I heard a saying somebody said when they was wondering why their business wasn't growing, and they were saying, Because you're trying to be the CEO of the business when God is the CEO, you're the manager. Amen. Amen. That's right. <laughs> Amen. Man, I heard that same thing. To make sure it goes the right, but God is up. really the CEO. God is yes. The CEO. <laughs> he really is. And you know, with, like somebody told me that when I was worrying and stressing, they was like, Why is you worrying? God is gonna work that thing out. He is the CEO. And I was like, What? I didn't never understand it either, sis, but now I do. And you know, like I said, I just look at things so differently now. Because I think still back then I had some little things on my shoulder. So I had to, I had to brush up on Katrina and you know, that's who you see before you now. And, you know, I just say for any woman or man that's on here now, I'm always lifting you up in prayer. As I say to lift up Leah, myself, Tiffany, anybody in the BVP, come on, yes. lift us up in prayer. Keep praying yes. that we reach souls and we save souls and we, we deliver, we yes. deliver for our God and that yes. we deliver everything that God says we're supposed to do and yeah. in Jesus name I know that it will happen I don't think I know and I know and I know and I know yes <laughs> <laughs> yes when he put that vision on us oh we just like yeah, yes we got, it. we got it just show us we the, got it. the way to maneuver and work it out yes I said he's the CEO we're just the managers yeah, Make we're just sure the managers. Everything is Look. running how it's supposed to be running. That's right. And when things go wrong, what we do, we drop to our knees and talk to the CEO. Exactly. That's exactly. What we do. <laughs> we need a meeting. That's what we do. <laughs> yes. I, I tell people, look, I don't worry no more. I say I, I have no time to worry because I have I'm getting old. I'm 51. I'll be 52 in March. And I'm look, like, look, good. I ain't got time. Look at that. Thank you. Look, I said I don't have no work, time to be worrying about. Supposed folks. to be doing it for him. Yes. You'd be ageless. <laughs> exactly. We're glowing, girl. We're glowing. Yes. <laughs> I love you, Leah. I'm so excited. Yes. I'm so excited for all of us. I'm so excited for the future. You know, I'm also um, involved with Journey Towards Purpose in South Carolina, Ooh. and that's where I got my coaching license, and we're doing big things as well. So when I tell you, your girl is just trying to mix and blend with everything because I want to strengthen myself to go everywhere, and I just want to be a blessing wherever the God puts me in. He has put me with Tiffany and you and Cedric and some other wonderful people. I'm just excited for what 2020 has to offer all of us. Oh my gosh, let me just tell you what just was put in my soul to say. We have to do a tour so that we, we are spreading it, not just on the East Coast. We need to be mm -hmm. all over the globe. We do. We right? really do. And that just, when I tell you, it just was like nugging at me in my pit. And I'm like, you know what? Let me just say it. 
We do need to do that. We, we do. We, we need do need to do that. Let's start cool. working on that. Let's, yes. let's start working on it because we need that. We need, and I want to go back home where Tiffany's from DC too, where Maryland. Hey, I'm and from, we yeah, need I'm to from go. Maryland. Yeah. What? Go ahead, girl. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we need to go back home and spread this too. Yes. I'm just so excited. 2020 is opening up so many opportunities and we cannot, yes. we cannot let it pass us. And yeah, so I look forward to doing a tour. Let's put it together. I'm right behind you, sis. Okay, I got it. I, he put, he just, he put it in my pit and was like, you need to say this. <laughs> so I had to say it. I'm being obedient. So since okay. he told me to well, say I'm it, he's going to give me the, the vision to work on it. Work on it and That's so right. we'll know the details. <laughs> Well, let me, I'm right here. You let me know the details. I will be back down in North Carolina on the 19th. So if you want to get together, we have a little. I'm an event that day. What time? 10 a.m. 10 a.m. to 1. I'm having a um, fancy hat brunch for domestic violence awareness. So I'm going to have speakers. Okay, send me, me, send me the info so I can come to that. That's send me the info. I didn't even know. Okay, and I will come. Um, cause I think I'm not meeting Tiffany until three o'clock. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Because yeah, we talked about that because you were doing you your event. That's right. Yep. Well, send me the info so I know where it is and I will be there. That's I'm always supporting that. Yeah. Yes. We'll do that. I love you so much. This has been so great. So much as well. Yes. I oh my God. Look, you was nervous. You was I nervous, was. but when I tell you. <laughs> You did a awesome job. I applaud you, my sister. You did awesome. It just takes us getting you. Look, we're so used to Tiffany. That's what it is. <laughs> but, but you I'm did like, an I don't awesome mess job. Up her vision, but it just nah, was like you was talking on the phone and just. That's what it was. Phone. And I'll be doing you next Monday. So it'll yeah. be the same way, having a conversation piece. I love you. You stay lifted yes, up with God, you. and I know you're oh, open. God has got you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. This You're was, welcome. I, love. I, it was amazing. It was amazing. It was. Yes. It was amazing. I, I love you so much. You. I appreciate you even more. Thank you so much. You're welcome, love. Have a blessed night. You too. And thank you, everyone who was watching. We appreciate y'all staying we tuned. Do. For Speak Up and Peace Inspire. And yes. yes. Yes, we did this tonight. <laughs> We're going to do it again next Monday, y'all. Next Monday, it'll be Katrina interviewing Leah. I look forward to it. God bless you guys. All right, y'all. Good night. Good night.